So I had a follower named Deanna message me and say, can you do a video on chest pain protocol? So let's go over like the assessment and the intervention for chest pain. All right, now when we're talking to the patient, we want to assess the pain or how much discomfort they have in their body. So we're gonna ask the location, um, where in your chest does it hurt? Does it radiate anywhere? Does it like radiate to the chest? Does it radiate around the back? Does it start in the back and radiate in the front? That's the classic sign for a female having an MI or a heart attack. Um, what makes it worse? What relieves it? How long have you had it? How frequent you've had it? Any like associated symptoms? Um, and the things that we want to like be like, ding, 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 this is not great. Red flag, red flag, is if they have like a sudden onset of sharp stabbing, crushing pain in the chest, um, and it could be central, left-sided, or, or uh, right, uh, pain radiating from a shoulder or especially the, the left arm into the shoulder and then radiating to like the neck or the jaw, a tightness, heavy pressure. I feel like an elephant sitting on my chest. Ding, ding, red flag. I should get a little red flag. Um, there could be shortness of breath associated with it, dizziness, syncope, um, shortness, I already said shortness of breath, uh, nausea, vomiting, um, belching and indigestion. And, uh, what else? Another big one is, uh, that feeling of impending doom where the patient's like, something's definitely wrong with me. If they ever tell you that they're right, just listen to them. Vital signs. You could have an irregular pulse, uh, changes in their heart rate or their rhythm. They can have hypotension or hypertension, decrease O2 saturation. Um, and you also want to ask their history. Like, do you have a history of heart disease or diabetes or hypertension or high cholesterol? Um, do you have any issues with like lethargy, shortness of breath, that kind of thing? Also history of any like cardiac meds, again, like digoxin, um, anything for high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Also, are they using any, uh, cocaine, Viagra, Cialis, those, because those, they play a part. Also, you may not want to mix sublingual nitro with those types of, um, drugs. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit them up. We're going to give them O2, especially if it's less than 94%. Um, we're also going to do a 12 lead EKG. If the patient has not taken aspirin, it doesn't have an aspirin allergy. You want to give aspirin, um, follow the Mona, uh, morphine, oxygen, nitro aspirin. Uh, what else? Uh, initiating blood work. What blood work are we going to do? CBC electrolytes, coags, uh, cardiac enzymes, and or also cardiac biomarkers is what some of them are called. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. I can do this. I can do this. What else? Uh, sublingual nitro. What else are we going to do? Obviously be monitoring and wait for all the tests to come back. And then depending on what happens after that, if they have ST elevation in the EKG, then it follows a whole other set of protocol. I hope this helps.